All right, so Jade Moon asks, I also have a few questions if you want. It's a little on the depressing side, so if you don't want to answer it, please don't force yourself. Actually, first of all, let me address the first half of that. Ask me anything you want. I don't care if it's depressing. I don't care if it, you know, uh, I don't care if it's weird. I don't care whatever it is. Um, feel free to ask me, man. I, I'm not here to judge anybody. I don't care if it's depressing and stuff. I've got plenty of points of views on things that are down the rabbit's hole, so to speak. Uh, I've been down there many times before, so um, I can speak from experience on those sides. You know, maybe not as deep as others, maybe a little bit deeper than others. Pain doesn't have a, uh, what's my saying? Pain doesn't have an exchange rate, you know, so. Anyway, he says, okay, what is your opinion about self-harm? Would you be friends with someone who did or does it? Would you ever date somebody that did or does it? Or that has done or does it? Uh, how would you help someone that is dealing with it? Um, I have dated someone who... I've dated one girl who did it. Um, I had dated one girl who had been doing it as I was with her. Um... So yeah, I'm very familiar with that and I have a lot of experience with it. Personally, I have never, uh, as close as I've ever really come to that. When I was younger and growing up in hotels and stuff like that and just, you know, life wasn't the best, uh, I used to scratch myself a lot and I know that doesn't sound bad, but I used to get like scabs and then a vivid memory that I have is I used to sit in the shower in a hotel room and pick the scabs and watch my blood go down the, um, the drain. Sounds pretty morbid, I know, but uh, I was, man, it was a deep, dark place back then, and, you know, that's just kind of how I, maybe I was bored, maybe that's how I coped, you know, whatever, you know, it's, uh, I understand that that sounds kind of creeper and shit, but it's part of my history, so. Um, one of the girls that I was with, uh, she had marks on her forearms, um, from where she had done things before. And I treasured them. I really did because they're, no me wrong, I'm not saying that, you know, if a chick like sliced her face off that I would still treasure that. But there was something intricate about, you know, those marks on her forearms. There was something that showed depth, a horrible use of words, but um, showed depth to her personality and showed an intricacy. Wow, so good with words right now. Um, and I was attracted to that in a way. She was a very interesting, very, you know, intense person. She was an MMA fighter. So, uh, you know, I guess you'd call that an old version of self-harm, right? She used to like getting punched in the face. So, um, I like playing hockey. You know, I don't mind getting hit with pucks and stuff like that. It, it makes me feel alive in a way. You know, I've boxed before. I've done a lot of stuff uh, to where pain, there are a few different ways you can respond to pain. Um, it can bring you pleasure, it can make you cry, or it can make you laugh. I'm much more the type to where it makes me laugh. Just because like when I get hit with something or something like that, I'm just like, what the fuck, you know? I used to be the type to cry about it. And it wasn't until I was lying down uh, in the middle of the street and I... I just flipped over where we made luge boards like so we got a skateboard and like cut it in half and put a plank of wood and we were riding down the street and I flipped it over and uh, smashed myself up and I was crying my buddy came up and he was laughing at me like a like a having fun laugh he was a good friend he wasn't being a douchebag he was just like oh dude that was awesome I'm sitting there beginning to cry and I was like yeah that was awesome and it really changed my perspective on how you can respond to pain you don't have to respond to pain with tears you know, you can acknowledge it and laugh it off more often than not. Um, but yeah, so I had an ex that was really into that. Um, I understand why people do it. Um, almost every girl I've been with has enjoyed some pain in one way or another. I'm very... <laughs> um, in the bedroom, uh, there are a number of different things that, you know, I enjoy. A uh, long list of fun things to do in the bedroom. And every girl that I've been with has been into pain um, in some form or another. I'm not saying all of them like to have limbs cut off, but, um, you know, they've enjoyed different kinds of things. So I can understand how it can bring you pleasure because it did for them. But uh, 
never really did it for me. You know, it never was my thing. And I don't look down upon people. It's a way for a lot of people to, to help them find answers, to help them find peace. They see themselves bleeding or they feel that pain and it's a release. And it's like, you know, it just, it does that certain thing. It triggers something. I think it triggers endorphins, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so I get it. You know, I no reason to judge those types of people. They're dealing with things. They're doing things that they think that they need to do. Uh, the last question in this was, how would you help someone that is dealing with it? Uh, if it is an addiction, you know, that's one thing. If I wouldn't go up to someone who's doing it and saying, I wouldn't say that you're wrong. I wouldn't say that you are, you know, you need to stop. I wouldn't say that. Uh, if they came to me and said, hey, I need to stop, or they didn't look so good, I'd say, hey, are you okay? Do you think you should stop? But I wouldn't. You know, I would never tell anybody that you're doing this wrong, even with drugs, alcohol, any crutch in life or any sort of thing, because we're all going through this life at a different pace and taking different paths and directions and shit. So it's, there's no right and wrong way to do it. So, um, but if someone did come to me and say that they needed something else, you know, to replace that, or if uh, they were tired of doing it and as it was an addiction, a lot of a lot of addictions you can replace, you can substitute with other things. Uh, something like that. I don't know. I, I really don't know because I don't have any direct experience. Distractions are hugely important for a no, for a number of things in life. You know, so uh, find a distraction. Find a good distraction. Hypothetically. Um, either that or maybe you're in a position in life that you're not enjoying and in order to get that release, in order to disconnect yourself from that, you're cutting or you're hurting yourself and stuff like that. Uh, change your position in life. Change things up. Do different things. Get out of the fucking house. You know, Do whatever you're not doing right now. Change things up to see if it'll fix itself. Just keep trying stuff if you're not happy. If you're happy with it, shit. You know, slice shit off, man. That's you. Go nuts. Um, as long as it's making you happy. Because who am I to tell you what makes you happy? Who are you to tell me what makes me happy? It's all within yourself. So, um, but yeah, help distract yourself. Help take yourself away from it. Change your position. Do stuff like that if you're not happy with what you are doing. And as always, at least, you know, try to stay pushy. <laughs>